Okay, everyone, so for our first lesson on our uh, month two of uh, WordPress with e-commerce, we'll, we'll do a quick recap of uh, setting ourselves up in, uh, in, a, in a WordPress development environment again. Uh, we won't do every single step again, but a uh, quick reminder, because I forgot already, what is the software that we use when we're on Windows when we are trying to set up a local WordPress testing environment? WAMP. WAMP server. Yes, so we've already got WAMP server installed, obviously. There we can get it from, um, I think, WAMPserver.com. It's already installed on our computers. How many of you uh, managed to get WAMP server installed on your home computer anytime last month? Okay, good. How many of you did it go pretty smoothly? How many of you did it not go smoothly? Okay. Laptop good, just no. Oh, okay. <laughs> so um, if you do have a laptop, remember you can bring it. We'll try to troubleshoot it. Uh, and uh, conversely, if you are on the uh, on a on an Apple computer, what uh, software would you use if you were trying to set all of this up? Yeah. Mamp. Okay. So were any of you on Mamp at home? Yeah. A little bit of trouble with it. Um, again, bring it, bring your Mac, bring your laptop, bring your Windows machine. Uh, we'll try to do some troubleshooting. That helps me also because when I write these handouts, I might have a better idea of what could go wrong and I can put it in the handouts. So we've got WAMP server. Let's go ahead and on your desktop, double click your WAMP server icon. For some reason, mine is called Start WAMP server and yours just says WAMP server. Just click WAMP server. And remember that on the bottom right, you should have a little W that appears in the double arrow. Did everyone get a green, the green W eventually? So obviously, MAMP is a little bit different, but I can't show that on a Windows computer here. We've got our W, we've got our WAMP server loaded, it's green. Uh, next, click on the WAMP server icon and go to localhost. So click on localhost to bring up the web browser. So what we're running here now is a virtual server. It's like buying Victor.com. It's a. It's got all the capabilities of a of a server. It's got. Um, the reason it's it's called WAMP is because it stands for uh, Windows. It stands for uh, Windows. Apache, MySQL, PHP. And these are the core technologies that um, power the server. So if you're on, on, on the Mac, then it's simply Mac, Apache, etc., MAMP. And then if you're running on Linux, there's one called LAMP for Linux, Apache, etc. So these are the core technologies. Um, so let's go in and create our database. We're going to do it slightly different than last time. Uh, so here under Tools, click PHP My Admin. Yes. Do your site? Yeah. You still need to create a database. Okay. I'll be with you just one moment. Let's create a database here but we're going to call it something slightly different. We're going to call it WP4 because we're going to install WordPress 4. The name of the database doesn't really matter. So we're going to call it WP4 when we set up WordPress 4. So we'll call it WP4, and this is where our WordPress 4 
site will live. Um, create, and this is all we really needed to do previously. We just created a database. But let's explore uh, PHP My Admin just a little bit. Um, usually, you don't really need to get very deep into this, but I've actually experienced a few times <coughs> when I have um, gotten clients, because remember, I, I teach and I also have clients that I do this stuff for. I've gotten clients where, um, and I think there's two types of clients, uh, the, the good clients and the clients that have already started a project. Uh, and by that I mean is that it's a lot better for me as a company to start working with a, with a client that is from zero so we can set it all up properly for them and know exactly how it's set up. And the other kind of client, which is a little more common, is that the client already has a website, already has WordPress, and then they might hire my company to improve it or add upon it and, and that sort of thing. And then there has to be a big discovery phase that, of course, we charge for to figure out what their site currently is, what its template is, does it even have WordPress, what's the capabilities of the server, do you have your passwords, all of that stuff. And I bring this up at this point here because there's been a few times that I've gotten into a client and, okay, you have WordPress, and we eventually got figured out that we've got WordPress, but we didn't, we didn't have all the passwords. Because it happens that people get with a web design company, and then something happens, and then they have a falling out, and the company falls off the face of the earth, and then you have no more access to your site, but you have access to the server. And I've been able to figure out how to log into their WordPress by going to the database, by going to the PHP to look at the database. So let's explore this screen a little bit. I did it through here. Uh, here we've got a list of the databases or create databases and other things like statuses and users and such. Uh, let's look under users, the users tab here. This lists the users that are available to log in to PHP My Admin to edit databases, delete databases, backup databases. That's why we've always been logging in with root, because the root account is, uh, is set up. If we wanted a brand new account, you don't have to do this, but we've got add user. And then we can create add user with a name, other settings, defaults are fine, password, and at the same time create a database. So right now we've got a user called root, and when we set up WordPress 4.0 it asks what's the name of your user and what's your password. Remember user was root, password was blank. So we could set this up that we create a brand new user called WP4 and create a database called WP4, and then a password. And through this screen is how you can create multiple, more secure WordPress sites. Because think about this. What if someone manages to figure out your password for your main account, root, let's say? Then they have access to all the databases of all your sites. So something a little more secure is to have a different user and database and password for every different site. And that's what I do for my clients. It's a little bit more than what we need to do, especially when using WAMP, but that's something to be aware of. And we can check what users are available under users. I also bring this up because when I've worked with other clients that work with a different des developer or designer, one of the first things we do once I secure the contract, is go in and remove access to the other person, the other company, as soon as possible. Remove <coughs> their password into WordPress, remove their password into PHP, my admin, remove their password into Twitter, or whatever the previous developer worked on, because you never know. Someone might be um, not so nice and say, I lost this client, I'm going to go in and oops, the database is gone. So here's a place where you would go in to the users and see, oh, John developer is still there. Select the develop, select that account, and uh, delete right there. Remove selected users. Yes. So to access to the client, like you said, this client can go over 
<laughs> Most likely, yes. Um, usually because, well, you know, maybe I can't say I can't say usually because it really depends on the on the way it was set up. The way we're setting it up is the most uh, technical and complicated way, but it's not as common. The more common way is that you go to GoDaddy, you you log in and you click install WordPress, and that way you don't have to get into the database itself. So I'll show you somewhere else where we can change that if it's done that way. But if you want to recover his website, you say that you can go to this database, right? Well, I, you, you want to recover perhaps the password. Yeah. yeah, so it would be the database. Yes? So, uh, on this, if you're working on your own stuff from the last class, mm -hmm. you still, and your roots aren't the same, and mm -hmm. you should still go through this. So, if I want to modify from what I did from the last class. Well, specifically, what do you want to modify? The whole site? Yeah. No, we won't need to do that. Uh, that's out of that's more than what we need to do. Uh, we're just going to kind of continue as we were on the previous weeks. We really only need to get here if we need to uh, add users to the database, remove users, delete databases, etc. So I can still use my old. Yeah, we will. We will. Today we're going to use WordPress 4.0, but then we will resurrect the site from last month. Yes. What if you don't know the password from the previous developer? Can you find it in here? No, that most likely you will need to get from your provider, from GoDaddy or Bluehost or wherever the, the site is hosted at. They should be able to give you the password. No, no, the WordPress um, password that they would use. Oh, the WordPress password, okay. Um, that's... Let me see if I saved something here, because sometimes I run into those questions too, and I saved where I got the link to get that answer. Uh, I had to do something like that, where I didn't know what the login password and username was to WordPress, and I had to kind of go really outside of the box to get it. But I think I probably saved the link to that tutorial somewhere here. Let me uh, do a little side track here. I don't know if I mentioned it in the previous class. Uh, I would recommend you take a note of this site, delicious.com slash vmcampos. Uh, delicious.com is a site where you can save your bookmarks. So you're browsing a websites on your home computer, you find a cool website, you add it to your bookmarks. But then when you come here to class and you want to show me that link, well, your bookmark was on your home computer. If you get a free account at delicious.com, you can save your bookmarks there. And that means you can visit your account from any computer. So I, when I find some useful links about WordPress or Linux or whatever I'm into, I save my bookmark here to Delicious so I can access it from any computer. So let me take a browse here. About, um, did I save? This one, I think it's this one. Uh, so if you go to my delicious account, so delicious.com vm campus, don't forget the m. I've got 400 links there apparently. Uh, if you go to number one, two, three, four, five, six. If you go to number six, that's what I found uh, to recover a password on WordPress when I don't know what the what, what the what the password is, and that's resetting your password. It's straight from WordPress, the WordPress Codex, which is the WordPress instruction manual, and they tell you there, okay, to recover your password, you probably need to go into the database, PHP My Admin, and change a couple things there. The step should be there. So back in February, I had to do this, I guess. That's when I saved it. Has anyone used uh, Delicious before? No? Okay, I would recommend you do if you find some good links that you want to store, because you might be saving your links on your on your home web browser. Let's say you move to a new laptop, uh, you don't have your the same web browser anymore. You can um, access them here. Uh, 
All right, so users, this is where you would go for that sort of thing. Let's look at a couple of other screens here. Uh, we can look at export, the export tab. Export will allow you to export the database for backup. However, I still think the best way to do this is through the duplicator plugin because that exports a, a copy of your database and your website and your users and your pictures and your posts and pages, everything, your products. This would only save the database itself, which isn't as useful as the whole site. <laughs> But here's where you can save it if you just want to be com a completist. You go to export, you can do a quick export, and then all the defaults will, will work. Then you'll get this big file that is the database. Conversely, you have import. Let's say for some reason you went from Bluehost to HostMonster, <coughs> and you your previous developer did save the database, but not the whole site. Well, via import here, we would be able to import the selected database and then try to rebuild WordPress. Question. In our endless database, what information is it automatically, what is it going to be saving for? We will come back to it once we install WordPress so we actually see the information. There's nothing in the database just yet. So let's look at some of the databases that exist. Go back to the Databases tab. You should get a list usually on the left side of what databases exist, but here's another screen to look at it. And these are the databases. Information Schema, MySQL, Performance Schema, Test, and WP4. So... Let's click on um, Information Schema. So what we're seeing here are the different, uh, the different pieces of the database. Um, this database, I believe, was created from PHP MyAdmin itself. Uh, so I'm curious, uh, notice we've got also, so a database is a collection of information. For example, this, uh, this uh, syllabus could be a database, and it could be defined various ways. It could be page 1 is a record in the database, and page 2 is another record. And then the, the particular sections of the of the syllabus are sub records of the database. So we can look at, for example, here files, click on browse, which is empty. Okay, let me go back. What about engines? Okay, let's go back and look at engines. <coughs> So this is all the stuff behind the curtains. There's something called federated and black hole and memory and, and then parameters. Again, this is very technical. You probably will not have to deal with it unless the time comes that you do need to deal with it. So at least you've perhaps explored things a little bit to see this is my database and then I see in the database, oh, here's a place that says users. Here's where I would go into my WordPress database to update the password, change the password, delete a user, etc. So up on the top, I'll just press back. And again, this is informational. Press back. So our WordPress database WP4 on the left side, if you, if you click on it, again, our database is empty. We're going to set up WordPress right now, and then when we come back to the screen, it'll be full of stuff. And then we'll see what is our basic WordPress database look like once we've installed WordPress. So we need to get a copy of WordPress 4.0. We don't have it on our computer, so we will have to download it. 
So let's, uh, on your web browser, we're going to open a new tab or a new window and go to wordpress.org. WordPress.org. When you do this at home, you need to do this. When you do it here, when you work here, you don't need to do it because we're going to resurrect our site, which was a 3.9, I think. But here, we'll select Download WordPress, top right. And then here, be careful, we've got Download WordPress 4.0 as a zip file or download it as the tar.gz file. Don't download that one. You don't have a use for that one. You want download WordPress, the big blue button there. So click on it and it pops up for me. Would you like to open or save? I'm going to select save. That was fast. Did yours finish downloading? So uh, mine says it downloaded, so I'm going to click on that folder here to open the folder where it downloaded to, probably to your desktop. Okay, again, if you didn't get that message, just go to your desktop, and most likely that's where it downloaded to. Oh, there's mine right there, right on the desktop. Where is yours on the desktop? Yep, right on the desktop. Did you find it? Okay. Alright, so on my desktop I've got WordPress 4.0.zip. If you double click it, it'll then open up to show you a folder called WordPress. So that WordPress folder, we need to put that into our WW folder as we've been doing before. So I'm going to leave that window open right there and open another window, another computer window. So from the desktop, open up computer. Do you want to take this part? Not yet. So then inside of the local disk, double click local disk. And then you'll find WAMP folder, double click WAMP. And then you'll find www, double click www. And so here's what I've got. I, uh, I double click the zip file, and it shows me this is what's in the zip file, that folder. And what I want to do is simply drag it from the zip file into the www folder here. Make sure you're in the www folder. So this is where you would take your USB WordPress, right? Yes. Okay. That's right. So I'm going to drag it over and it's going to say it's copying, so wait a moment for that to copy over. 1,275 items. And then so to confirm, you're in the WW folder and now you've got your WordPress unzipped folder. I want to change that name to WP4. Again, this name doesn't matter, but this is how we can have multiple sites. We just put the WordPress uh, 
core files in a folder with different names. So let's change our folder name. I'm going to close my, f my window where I had the zip file. I'm done with that. I just want to focus on the WW folder and click on the name of WordPress so we can call it WP4. Can I close the zip file? Mm -hmm. So we've got a database set up. We've got um, the brand new WordPress for uh, clean installation, the core files, we'll go back to the web browser and we'll go back to localhost on the address bar. You go back to your web browser and we'll go back to localhost. All right, we'll go back to localhost, and everyone should see now under your projects, WP4. Does anyone not see that? Well, obviously, you're using your own site, so whatever you call yours shouldn't be. Okay, so here we've got WP4 uh, folder. We've confirmed there's our site. So now up on the address bar, we'll go to localhost slash WP4. That's the name of our WordPress 4 site.
So localhost slash WP4. Now this is a little different because now we're with WordPress 4.0, it's got a built-in multi-language support. So previously when we set up WordPress a long time ago, last month, we uh, only had it in English unless we downloaded the other versions of of the um, of the code. But here now it's built in with a variety of languages where you can set up WordPress. So we'll select English, US, continue, and then the rest should be familiar. It's going to ask you for these items which we have. So select let's go, and again this should be familiar. So how do I fill this out? You tell me now. WP4. Good. Username is root. Good. Password is nothing. Empty. Mm -hmm. Database local uh, database host is still local host. And table prefix we don't change it. Or we don't need to change it. Yes. So you in your system you just set it up and you choose English. Let's see that I want to get the language in English and Spanish. Do I need to have a version of the Spanish and a version of the English and can I do it just Do you mean that when someone visits your site mm -hmm. to buy your products they can choose to view it in English or Spanish? That's different. Okay. That's just what does what does the dashboard look like? English or Spanish? If we want people to come to our site and then click show me English, show me Spanish, that's gonna be something else, like a like a plugin. So what is choosing the language for them? Well, again, if you set the language to something else, when you log into your dashboard, your dashboard will be in Spanish, not your site. Oh, I see. Question? Well, again, if you're doing it with your files, you're going to have slightly different things. So perhaps follow along with mine now, because I'm still uninstalling it. All right, so here then we're going to select Submit, run the install. Oh, mm -hmm. Yes? So in the previous screen, uh, database cost, we are working on the local database, but if you really could go down the other database, you could have like a number of cost, number of cost. It could be, and that depends. So that's a good question. It was, if you are working on your live site on GoDaddy or Bluehost or whatever, is it still localhost or is it the name of the server? Which it might be something like, you know, secure server uh, 125.com, whatever. Possibly. Uh, I've found, however, that this still works with localhost even when it's on a live server because what we're doing here is we have to think about it from the perspective of where the WordPress files are at. The WordPress files right now are on a server. Right here it's a virtual server, but when they're on GoDaddy it's still a server. So the WordPress files will just say, where's the server? It's the local host. It's the, it's the host, it's the server where the WordPress is, in, is installed. So I've found a lot of times that this still works even when the database, even when WordPress is up on a real server. If not, that's when you would read the documentation, or check GoDaddy tech support or Bluehost tech support and they'll tell you what to type there. Because sometimes it could be a complicated address, depending on, this, on the host. Okay, I'll help you in a moment. Let's click Submit here. And um, click, uh, it's, okay, just a moment, I need to do this one more time. Here we go. So do you then see welcome information needed? Yes. All right, so uh, we'll call this, because we're just going to practice this. This is not going to be our real site. We are going to resurrect our site. We'll call this my new WordPress 4.0 site. And just to keep with the tradition that we've been doing previously, what has the WordPress administ the WordPress username been? Admin. Yes. All right. So the username is going to be admin. 
password if we decide to use mine. Eventually it's going to be the same thing, Happy Cat. You can call it whatever you want, whatever password you want. Just remember to write it down. You can put a real or fake email address here. If you put a real one, that will uh, help you retrieve your password if you forget your password. And then uh, privacy, we'll turn off privacy. This is one of the things we need to turn on when we're ready to go live. Right here we're saying do not allow the search engines to find my site. And that's fine because I'm not, on, I'm not online yet. I'm on my local host. I'm on my computer. The search engines can't even find my site. So we're going to turn that off. Once we do put it up on Bluehost, then we need to turn that back on so that the search engines can find your site. You get traffic and you get sales. Install WordPress. Hopefully you get a successful message. If not, we're going to do a, a break very soon. You want to select Login. Login with the username and password you just made. Alright, so um, we've uh, installed WordPress 4.0. This was a recap of what we've done previously with some slight variations, uh, so it should not be completely new. Uh, we're going to take a break now, 10 minutes. When we come back, we'll, uh, we'll, keep, uh, we'll keep going. So we'll be back at 10.10.